Okay, thank you, Peter, for the introduction. And uh, well, uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to this uh, uh, nice conference. And I'm very glad to, to participate here. Uh, so the title of this talk is, as you see here, Restricted Variance Optimization for Geometries, Intersections, and then some. That is, uh, I, I will talk to you about the method that we have been developing in the last uh, three, four years, maybe. Uh, actually, very close to here, in this same building. <coughs> uh, where we use some machine learning techniques, in particular Gaussian process optimization, uh, uh, regression, uh, to try to improve the methods uh, or the, the algorithms used for particular first geometry optimization and also wave function optimization, as we will see. Um, let's see if this works. So uh, first in this talk, I will start uh, giving some uh, brief overview of uh, how conventional optimization method works, especially those based on the, those second order optimization methods. And then uh, I will talk about, uh, I will give the, the basic idea of the, the Gaussian optimization, um, the uh, optimization base of Gaussian process regression, how we implemented that. And then uh, uh, I will present some results uh, for some cases uh, in the more or less uh, chronological um, uh, progress as we implemented them for stable structures, for uh, um, transition states or uh, constraint optimizations, also then conical intersections, which are a bit more tricky to, to, to do in this case. And then uh, I will present some uh, preliminary or not actually not preliminary, but some uh, results on uh, uh, how we apply this uh, for uh, wave function optimization, and especially in the case of uh, SCF for uh, hard to fog or DFT calculations. Yeah, I'm sorry about the, this uh, blinking. I think it's a problem with my computer. <coughs> OK, well, uh, as I said, the uh, basic uh, geometry optimization or optimiza uh, optimization methods used for geometry and other types of equations uh, of uh, uh, properties are usually based on uh, a second order Taylor expansion where we uh, like express our energy as a uh, truncated Taylor series. Yeah, we hardly see that, but anyway. Um, we usually truncate it in second order, as I said, and then we express our energy in terms of uh, the gradient and the, the, the Hessian, usually, or even if it's approximate, close to an expansion, uh, expansion point, which would be, say, the X0. And usually we're, in, we're interested in finding stationary points of this energy function. Uh, that is a great uh, points where the gradient uh, vanishes or is equal to zero, and we can try to find this when we solve for the displacement or where the the um, uh, the stationary point will be found, and we can find this uh, expression with yeah, just inverse the inverse the Hessian. And now this is the basic idea, and the problem here is the of course the expansion is not exact, so we have to. Uh, do this in an, as an iterative process, and then, uh, so yeah, we have to uh, solve for x and then iterate the process. Uh, generally, uh, we don't use the exact Hessian because that's, uh, in general, f at least for the methods we're interested in, uh, quite expensive to cal calculate. So usually we. Uh, start from an approximate Hessian and maybe we update it and that gives uh, rise to quasi-Newton methods. Uh, then there is the question of how do we express the, the surface or the energy expression, what uh, coordinates we use to uh, represent our system. So there is uh, uh, what, how exactly we define the x here, then there are different uh, ways or dif uh, yeah, different ways to approach this in internal coordinates, Cartesian coordinates or other type of coordinates. And uh, another important thing in general in second order optimization methods is uh, the step restriction. Usually, since, as I said, the, this uh, Taylor expansion is not exact, of course, then uh, we cannot, like, uh, or we should not 
perform very large steps in the geometry optimization because then uh, uh, we are not uh, quite sure all the, uh, the approximation for the energy uh, breaks down when, when you go very far from the expansion point. Uh, so how do we usually perform this uh, step restriction? Uh, there's a trivial way to do it, which is just we define some maximum step length and then we say, okay, if we move, uh, uh, if our step is farther than this length, we just truncate it to the uh, arbitrary length that we define. That kind of works, but this, uh, this uh, length uh, or a step restriction that we um, apply is a bit of uh, arbitrary, as I said, uh, uh, parameter or uh, some, uh, it's not really well defined. So it's an, like, like an empirical factor that we introduce. Uh, an alternate way to, to the, apply this step restriction is the so-called rational function optimization, where we just uh, uh, express our energy as a standard second order optimization methods under displacement. It's uh, divided by, by some factor that depends on the step length. So in a way, we include the step restriction in the model such that the, the second order method, uh, the minimum for the second order method is already at the maximum step length that we include. That typically works, but still it's kind of an arbitrary uh, parameter that we have to introduce for, re for restricting the length, the step length. So in general, that's the basic idea of the, the, the methods that we use for geometry optimization. And there are several problems with this that are more or less related. Um, we can see already that in these uh, methods, we don't use all the data that we uh, generate during the optimization. The second order uh, expansion is only done uh, around the uh, latest point or the latest, latest expansion point and all the previous points that we have visited in doing the optimization are not used for the model. The model is only built for the last point or maybe last couple of points. Uh, the, uh, also, as you have seen in the figures, the model, the second order model that we use for the optimization doesn't really approach the true surface. It approaches the true surface locally. It's very good approximation locally around the expansion point, but it will never be close to the, to the true surface, uh, away from the, from the expansion point. Uh, also, because this is a second order model, it, uh, it can only describe a single stationary point, which, which is typically a minimum point or a saddle point or uh, like a transition state. But it cannot, if we have a, a surface that contains several points, like a, a reaction path where we have two minima and a transition state at least, these second order models cannot describe this full surface. It can only describe locally each point. And uh, also, since it's a second order model, it only has uh, uh, harmonic features or uh, yeah, it has uh, like, um, harmonic properties and any unharmonic uh, features in the surface cannot be well described by the model. And uh, finally, the second order model has no information about the uh, confidence of the model. It doesn't give, it doesn't tell us how accurate the model is uh, predicted to be uh, at any arbitrary point. It gives you a prediction, but uh, now it's up to you to trust it or not. But there's no measure of uh, on uncertainty or confidence. So uh, to try to solve these uh, drawbacks, we uh, turn to the, uh, using Gaussian process regression, also known as Kriegin, instead of a second order model. And the mm, basic formula for the Gaussian process is uh, like this, it's, and it's, oops. Uh, and it's just, we express the energy as some uh, base function or uh, constant value. So this is just like a, a baseline. Uh, plus, uh, and then we have some linear combination of these VIs are just uh, kind of basis functions uh, or actually covariance functions. You can think of them as Gaussians that are centered on the sample points. And in this case, the sample points are the points that we visit during the optimization. We don't need to pre-sample the, the surface. It's just the, the geometries that we uh, obtain during the optimization. Uh, this, uh, so if you think of these uh, functions as Gaussians, uh, the width of these Gaussians is a parameter that we have to introduce. 
and uh, uh, it's also called a uh, hyperparameter because it's something that's typically not optimized uh, fully, so it's something that you define. Uh, and uh, depending on the, sorry about this. So depending on the, the, the width of these uh, basis functions that are centered at the sample points, then the accuracy or the, 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 the quality of the approximation will be better or worse. But typically, you can find a range of, uh, of uh, widths of these uh, and Gaussians that give, at least for some uh, surface, a reasonable approximation for the surface. You can see that always the, the, sorry, the value of the energy or the surface at the sample points is always uh, reproduced regardless of the, of the uh, width of the Gaussian. Uh, this is just uh, fitting the energies. We can introduce also the gradient, and in this case, we talk about gradient enhanced Kriging, where we add to the linear, to the expansion of the energy uh, a term that includes the derivatives of the basis functions with respect, with respect to the coordinates. And uh, in this case, it's the same, but now the basis functions, as we see here, are just the, the Gaussians and also the derivatives of the Gaussian at each sample point. Uh, in this case, we fit or we reproduce exactly the energies and uh, gradients at the sample points, regardless of the width of the Gaussians. And uh, then finally, most importantly, with this uh, Gaussian process regression, we can ha have an estimate of the uncertainty of the model. So it tells us not only that the, what the expected value of the energy or whatever function we're fitting is, but also what is the expected uncertainty or variance of the surface of the prediction. And in this case, then we see that the, the uncertainty at the sample points is uh, zero because uh, those are reproduced exactly, but away from the sample points, depending on how accurate or how good the model is, then the, the uncertainty will, will be different. Um, so with this uh, kind of uh, model, we build a method that uh, there are other methods based on, on the Gaussian process regression by other authors that may be the distinguishing uh, characteristics of ours, which, is, uh, which we call uh, restricted variance optimization, is that uh, on first uh, we define our system in uh, internal coordinates, so the, the x in the uh, expression for the energy are the internal coordinates of the system defined for each molecular system independently. In the case of water, for instance, we could use the, 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 the bond lengths and the angle of this uh, uh, between the hydrogens and oxygen. That would be defined automatically for each system. Uh, in other, other authors, use the Cartesian coordinates or uh, Coulomb matrices or whatever. Um, yeah, and then the widths of these Gaussians or uh, basis functions that uh, we used for the uh, for the um, for the model, uh, they are not optimized to. They could be optimized to minimize the like or to maximize the likelihood of the model. But in our case, we just define them uh, such that they reproduce a, a model Hessian that uh, is typically used for geometry optimizations. So this uh, model, Hessian model function uh, predicts or gives a, a, an approximate Hessian given an expansion point, and then uh, we set the uh, widths of the Gaussian such that this model Hessian is reproduced exactly. Uh, that is for only one point. Then when we have more points, then the, the Hessian will, of course, uh, uh, be different. And uh, then uh, with this, uh, way to build the model, uh, we proceed normally as a you know, normal geometry optimization. We uh, comp uh, uh, build the model for uh, each, uh, as we, uh, or so for each iteration, we build a model with the previous iterations, and we find the minimum on that model. And in the, uh, now that we have the um, uh, 
uh, way to obtain the uncertainty or the variance, the predicted variance of the model. We restrict the step length, not by an arbitrary factor, but just taking into account how accurate or how uncertain the model is. So this uncertainty that we can get from the Gaussian process regression, we utilize it in order to restrict the, the step length. Uh, yeah, so that uh, w if the model is quite sure about where the surface is, then we can take very long length, very long steps, and then uh, in other regions it will be shorter. And this is just a representation for the, how it would work in the case of a hydrogen molecule. Okay, so then uh, this is the general idea of the method, and we apply this for different kinds of systems. And the first one it was for uh, stable structures, so we optimized minima, and so how, uh, how then this method compares to established uh, or conventional optimization methods. Uh, as the test molecules, we used uh, these ones here from the Baker uh, transition state suit uh, and the S22 of uh, uh, B molecular complexes. And even mm -hmm. though, oops. sorry, even though this is a transition state, uh, st uh, transition state like structures, we are optimizing only minima here. We just use the, the, these transition state, close to transition state structures in order to have an initial structure that is not very close to the minimum so that the, the optimization has some work to do. And uh, so the results here uh, are, were actually quite encouraging. Uh, we saw that uh, uh, even this uh, initial uh, implementation of the method, we could see already an improvement in the number of iterations required to, to, up, to find the minimum uh, compared with the, uh, with the conventional optimization methods, even though the conventional optimization methods have been implemented and uh, uh, developed during uh, many years. So already with this uh, initial implementation, we saw uh, uh, good, uh, good results. Uh, still, in the case of uh, this S22 for the bimolecular reactions, uh, sorry, uh, complexes, uh, there was, uh, it wasn't working maybe as good, there was some increase in the number of iterations, but this was, uh, this, uh, uh, we saw that it was mostly due to these two systems, uh, two cases, which were actually converging to a bit different uh, uh, local minima with the two methods. So once we remove these uh, two systems where the differences were larger, actually the, the, there is also an improvement there. Uh, and actually, the, we think that this uh, uh, worse, a bit worse performance in this case is due to the fact that the, the potential energy surface in these uh, complexes is very flat. So uh, you can converge uh, quite in different places. And uh, in principle, it could be, or some authors have tried to work around it by doing some kind of uh, overshooting in the, in the optimization, try to step beyond the minimum so uh, to get a better extrapolation. Uh, but we haven't tried that yet, so this is without this overshooting. Uh, so as I said, this was quite encouraging. Uh, so we uh, went to the next step and tried to optimize, okay, not only minima, but maybe transition states. And uh, in order to, tra to optimize transition state, we needed to have also like constrained optimizations where you, know, you add some constraint in the, in the geometries or, or uh, some geometrical constraints or any kind of constraints. Uh, and these kind of uh, constraint optimizations are used, as I said, for transition states, at least for the initial part of the transition state, and also if you want to do a relaxed scan of some particular coordinate, or uh, when you optimize uh, transition uh, reaction paths, like the, the IRC that uh, Alexander showed before, they're usually done in uh, consecutive uh, uh, constraint optimization, so each it, each point in the path is a constraint optimization. 
So in this case, we work with this uh, with the test suit, and now we optimize actually the transition states for these uh, reactions and the uh, reaction path starting from this transition state. And the results were even better than with the, for the um, minima structures. Now the for the reaction for the transition state optimization, the reduction in the number of iterations is even larger than before. Uh, and also in all cases, in all these uh, transition states, all these structures, uh, the new method uh, worked better than the conventional method. And uh, it's even more different, uh, the performance is even better. Uh, when we look at the reaction paths, uh, this is a representation of how many of these, so each reaction path contains many points, many like uh, all the points around the path and each path is an optimization that converges in a number of iterations. So this represents how many of these points converge in two iterations, in three iterations, in four iterations, etc. And then we see that the, in the, with the new method, all the points or most of the points converge in, in uh, like two, three, four iterations at most, a few more, but uh, these are typically uh, the case. And uh, whereas in the conventional method, they take five to six iterations. So we see already uh, quite an improvement and, and quite uh, um, an important effect of the fact that we are using the information from all the points to, in order to build the model. And it's not like a second order model where you only use the information from the last point in order for the model. Here yeah, the model includes the information from all the previous points. And the next step was to apply this not to uh, transition states or uh, uh, stable structures, but uh, to conical intersections where they are, these are now the crossing between two uh, different electronic surfaces, uh, potential energy surfaces. And the trick here, or the, or the problem here, is that we have a situation like this where we have a peak or a cusp in the surface if we just focus on like, uh, the ground state in this case. And no matter how accurate we get in, for the surface around uh, between the data points, uh, this kind of uh, cusp where, it, where the surface is non-differentiable, then it will not be, it will never be correctly described by our uh, Gaussian process regression model. Uh, so the, what we did here is uh, to use not an adiabatic model, but a diabatic model where we uh, fit uh, individually the two surfaces and uh, uh, actually for this we need for this to work we need actually three surfaces and those are fitted individually the problem here is that uh, um, this uh, diabatic representation of the of the conical intersection is not unique so we have to work out how to put everything in the same frame of reference but uh, we did that we just, uh, implemented some ad hoc pseudo diabatization process. And uh, then we tested that with the number of conical intersections and number of molecular systems. And we optimized the conical intersections with, again, the, the new method and the old method. Now each point is, represents one of these systems. And we see that in general, we see that uh, uh, the, with the uh, RVO method, the number of iterations is reduced with respect to the, to the conventional optimization methods, and in some cases by some uh, quite large values. And not only, only the, the iterations was, uh, the number of iterations is reduced, but also the energies are typically slightly lower with the new method. So uh, it seems like the, um, the optimization works better than before. And uh, to conclude, I want to, uh, uh, show the, how we could apply this to wave function optimization, uh, where we optimize not the geometry of the system, but in the case of, uh, for instance, uh, SCF or the self consistent field uh, process, we optimize the orbitals of the system or the uh, density matrix. And the problem here is that the, the, if you look at how the, uh, this uh, uh, gradient enhanced Griggin model scales with the size of the system, it scales with the number of data points. Sorry. Uh, and also for each data point, we have to include all the dimensions in the surface because we include the gradient in all the dimensions of the, of the model. 
of the surface. So uh, that means that in the case of our geometry optimization, uh, where we have maybe uh, uh, like uh, hundreds of uh, dimensions in the in the like the geometry of the system, then uh, we have a size of this matrix that we have to invert that is large but manageable, typically. But if we try to apply this to orbital optimization, now the dimensionality of the surface can be much larger because that includes the number of orbitals in your system. And then the size of the matrix that we have to include, it, it, to uh, invert, is, uh, it starts to be still manageable, but of, of course this is already typically small systems, but uh, you can see that as you go to larger system with the largest basis sets, this will can become actually the bottleneck. So we had to, uh, to find a, a solution for that. And um, uh, we observe that typically when you use the uh, direct inversion of the iterative subspace or similar methods, then uh, they typically converge in just tens of iterations. They don't require like thousands of iterations to converge. They converge quite fast. So that uh, should mean that um, the, there is a, uh, some, th the degrees of freedom of the system are quite uncoupled, so they can be optimized in, in a very, um, uh, like, simultaneous way. We, you don't need to, uh, you don't need many iterations for that. So, um, uh, uh, the idea then was to reduce the dimensionality of the system, so not, not build a model that includes the whole dimensions of the system, but includes only the subspace of dimensions, and how to select these subspace of dimensions is just by using the, uh, the subspace span by the gradients that we explore and also the displacements in the different, uh, now it's in, in uh, orbital space. Uh, so uh, basically that means that the number of dimensions in the model is not the full dimensionality of the system, but it's just the number of iterations that we have visited. And this uh, again makes the, the size of the system much more manageable. Uh, and uh, the, of the order of as uh, the same as in the geometry optimization. So then to show the results here, we compare uh, for different uh, number of uh, uh, systems with uh, CF optimization, uh, Hartley Fock and Breath Relief. And uh, uh, here we see the, the, the distribution of the number of iterations with the conventional method and with the new method in green again. Typically, we see that the distribution is uh, 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 like uh, narrower with the new method and also a bit shifted to lower values. In this case, for singlets, it's not quite uh, observable, but uh, um, also we see that in some cases, this plus four plus one is the number of systems that didn't converge at all with the old method, but with the new method, all of them converge. So uh, although here it looks like uh, the dispersion is a bit larger, but still, we don't have these cases that don't converge, so it's a bit more robust. But it is more important when we go to triplets in this case, and also for uh, systems containing transition metals, metals uh, there, there's a quite a large number of systems that didn't converge at all with the uh, conventional method, but now with the new method, they all converge, and uh, of course now the, this, uh, uh, makes the comparison not so clear, but in other cases we see that uh, uh, typically the number of iterations is reduced with, uh, with the new method. And uh, similarly uh, for tablets, also like uh, we see that uh, all, all systems again converge with the new method where, uh, while there were cases that didn't with the new old method. Uh, so uh, just as a conclusion, I just saw that uh, with this uh, Gaussian process regression model, um, we can have an optimization method that uh, outperforms the conventional uh, methods based on second order expansions. Uh, also that we can use machine learning tools that typically require large number or large amount of data. We can still use the same tools with a limited amount of data. In this, in this case, it's just the, the uh, iterations during the geometry optimization, for instance and that uh, um, so using some domain specific knowledge like uh, what we have learned about how molecules behave the chemical intu chemical intuition how 
uh, the model Hessians used in, in uh, geometry optimizations. And if we apply this to the machine learning tools, then we can get uh, methods or we can get improvements uh, uh, to the established methods. Okay, and uh, that's all. Yes, I want to uh, show the people working in this project that include uh, Roland Lin, as you already recognize him. And uh, with this, I thank you all for your attention. I apologize for the technical problems, and I'm open to questions if there is time. Thank you, Ignacio. I guess we have time for a few questions. So we have one there, yeah. Thank you for the interesting talk. Uh, I'm curious about so the case you use it in SCF uh, optimization. So you said for the because of the dimensionality, you have to restrict the space of optimization. Do you still keep the whole history during your optimization in your, using your simplification? Um, well, actually, we only use the last uh, few iterations for the model. Okay. And it's typically the 10 last iterations in the model. But, uh, yeah, we could, in principle, build a model for, with a larger memory, a larger history. But yeah, uh, typically, we use only the last 10 points <coughs> because those are like, the closest to the minimum and the, uh, what we are interested in. Um, uh, if I could, uh, I'm a bit curious, uh, if you have infinite memory, would it be favorable to use the whole history or just the neighboring points? Uh, uh, well, it's not just a memory, but as you include more points, then the build of the model actually is more expensive in terms of uh, computation time. So mm -hmm. not just memory, but also uh, yeah. uh, computation time. But if you had infinite of both, yeah, I would use the whole memory of everything. You had, then, then you would have a more, Maybe not a global model, but a yeah, model that uh, at least uh, reproduces your whole history. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes. Uh, always love to see more Gaussian process regression. Um, so, in the uh, on the SCF method uh, situation again, um, it, when, I, when I'm running, say, a lot of similar structures, um, you know, one of the tricks you can use is you you start you start your optimization from the the previous answer. In this case, it seems like you could even then save all the previous, not maybe all the previous points as we just discussed, but save some number of the previous points to bootstrap your kernel for your, your GPR and then continue your optimization of some related structure. Is that like, re, like would that, does that, does that actually like, would that work? Uh, as long as the, all the structures are, uh, or the energies are obtained with the same uh, let's say uh, quantum method, so they all belong to the same surface, then yes, you could do that. It's not, we don't have it implemented, but it should be relatively easy to, to have like a, a set of points to start off the, the optimization. So you don't start from scratch, you just start from previous information that you have. Would that, would that work to sort of dovetail the SCF thing with the geometry optimization part if you're doing the, the inner step for the geometry with yeah, Sorry, say it again. So you had two parts here. You talked about optimizing molecular geometries and then you talk, talked about um, improving SCF. Hmm. And when you're optimizing the molecular geometries, I assume on, on the inner loop, there is still running, you're say, running a DFT calculation or something to get each point that your, your method says, hey, let's go here. Um, so when you're going along that geometry optimization, could you keep for the SCF part of the QM calculation, keep that, that kernel around? Um, I, I'm not sure that's uh, easy because the, then, uh, so if I understood correctly, using like the orbital optimization from a different geometry, that would be a bit tricky because then, then probably your like, uh, the coordinates are different. You're like fitting a different, uh, mathematical model in a different way, so to say. Okay, fair enough, uh, thanks. So I, I don't think it's uh, easy to, so, to do that. 